Thank you everyone for attending the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Security webinar. Today we'll give you information on who Bitdefender the company is. We'll follow that up with a technical overview of the engine that drives our award-winning protection. Finally, we'll jump into a demonstration of our Gravity Zone Management Console. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account manager. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one follow-up call with an engineer to review any technical details you may want to discuss. Let's start with a brief overview of our company. Our products start with the Bitdefender Gravity Zone that provides advanced endpoint security. We have data center and cloud security products like our unique agentless hypervisor introspector for Citrix Zen Server. We provide network security and unprecedented visibility into threats with our network traffic security analyzer. And we also deliver enterprise level services including our managed endpoint detection and response and professional services. We have over 17 years of innovation with almost half of our staff in research and engineering. Our 500 million endpoints feed our machine learning with threat data that helps us innovate with over 30 security layers and over 70 cybersecurity patents. Our technology is used in products by over 150 OEM partners. In 2008, while the industry was concentrated on improving signature-based detection, we knew that wasn't enough. Signature-based security alone is a catch-up game, and we realized to truly protect our customers, we needed to stay ahead of the threats. That's why we were the first company to develop machine learning-based threat detection. Our machine learning has over a decade of cybersecurity threats to learn from, putting it at a distinct advantage over our competition. This makes our threat protection uniquely powerful against advanced zero-day threats like ransomware. We currently hold 48 patents, seven of which are specific to machine learning technologies with 28 more pending. We continue to innovate with new technologies and features like the introduction of HyperDetect in 2017, which is a tunable extension of our machine learning technology. We expanded to provide managed EDR services in 2018. And in 2019, we added integrated endpoint risk analytics into Gravity Zone. We will explore these technologies a little bit later in this demo. Our innovation translates into industry leading results when it comes to independent testing. If you're unfamiliar with AV comparatives or AV tests, these are independent nonprofit organizations that test a wide variety of malware solutions. You can think of these independent tests as uh, consumer reports of cybersecurity solutions. Year over year, Bitdefender has been at the very top of their list in not only detection of known as well as unknown malware, but we're also been at the very best at doing so without sacrificing performance. Bitdefender is trusted to protect the sensitive data of some of the biggest companies throughout different industries, including finance, healthcare, education, and government, among others. We have case studies on our websites if you are interested in learning some more about these customers. In the next few sections, we're gonna take a look at the technology behind our Gravity Zone product. Bitdefender Gravity Zone is a comprehensive security platform that allows you to protect all of your endpoints in your environments, desktops, laptops, physical servers, virtual environments, and mobile devices. It is compatible with all major operating systems, all existing hypervisors, and multiple cloud platforms. It provides security automation, a high level of visibility, and simple and efficient manageability from a single centralized management console that communicates with a lightweight yet powerful single agent. Gravity Zone is designed to protect you from threats across the entire threat landscape by offering a layered solution that is delivered via a single lightweight agent and a single management console. As we mentioned before, our Gravity Zone product protects you with a layer solution that starts with a hardening and control layer that inoculates your environment against potential attacks. Next, we have a pre-execution layer that uses signature-based heuristics and machine learning to identify both known and previously unknown malware. Our on and post execution layer monitors for suspicious behavior, and then that allows you to take automatic action on damaging processes and can provide you with investigation response reporting and alerting tools to better manage the security of your environment. 
let's dive into a few key features. Our hardening control layer features several modules designed to prevent the attack from ever entering your environment in the first place. Our application control module gives you the ability to prevent specific applications from running on designated systems. Our web threat protection protects users from accessing malicious and fraudulent sites using URL reputation behavior analysis and machine learning. You can also use our web categories filter to restrict access to certain types of sites, including adult sites, social media, and much, much more. Our firewall replaces the Windows firewall on the endpoint, giving you centralized management of that feature. Device control allows you to manage permissions for external devices such as USB drives and Bluetooth devices. Our patch management module is an optional add-on that allows you to centrally manage and automate software updates for a wide variety of vendors such as Microsoft, Adobe, Sun Microsystem, and others. And lastly, our full disk encryption also an optional add-on allows you to centrally manage Windows BitLocker and Mac OS File Vault encryption technologies through a single Bitdefender agent and management console, even allowing you to manage recovery keys directly from our console. Our pre and on execution layer uses a combination of technologies and techniques to identify known malware as well as zero day threats. Our powerful machine learning module analyzes the behavior of objects. Those behaviors are tested against our advanced algorithms for any suspicious behavior. The process happens in nanoseconds, and all the analysis is done before the code has a chance to execute on the machine. I, our HyperDetect module offers a tunable extra layer of security with additional behavior analysis models that are trained to detect advanced threat at the pre-execution stage. Our Sandbox Analyzer offers the automatic submission of suspicious files from endpoints to a cloud-based sandbox for detonation and behavioral analysis. We'll talk about HyperDetect and Sandbox a little more in a moment. Our exploit prevention technology detects and identifies different exploit methods and protects system memory space that is utilized by common business applications such as browsers, document readers, media files, and runtime engines like Flash and Java. And lastly, our process inspector offers real-time continuous process monitoring, both when the process is executed and when it is active. So processes will be monitored throughout their entire life cycle and suspicious activities will be flagged and remediated. Our integrated EDR solution will empower you by providing you with an unprecedented visibility into the life cycle of a potential attack. Our event recorder module captures a variety of activity information from the systems and coordinates with our threat analytics module to create a prioritized list of incidents that need to be investigated. We provide multiple options for incident investigation and remediation. And we also provide visualization of incidents for a better view of how malicious items are propagating throughout the network. Since our EDR is integrated with our endpoint agent, it reduces resource requirements for early detection and incident response. Beyond protecting the endpoints, the detection and remediation layers limit the number of incidents requiring investigation, removing noise and complexity and really simplifying the EDR process. Now let's take a look at the management side of Gravity Zone to give you an idea of how that works. We provide two methods of control center deployment and management. We have an on-premises solution and we have a cloud-based solution. Our on-premises solution is a prepackaged hardened Linux virtual appliance that doesn't require any additional OS licensing or SQL databases. It spins up in under 15 minutes. Our fully hosted cloud solution just requires credentials and you can start setting up and deploying to your environment. There's no cost difference between the two solutions. Once we have our control center set up, you can employ different methods to discover the endpoints. Gravity Zone has dynamic integration with Active Directory, and with our on-premises option, we also offer integration with vCenter, Zen Server, and Nutanix. With Gravity Zone, you can also configure Relay, which is just an additional role embedded in the standard endpoint agent package. Any Windows or Linux machine can be de designated as a Relay, and these machines can help with endpoint discovery, deployments, updates, it can act as a communication proxy between the endpoints and the console. 
Gravity Zone also gives you a variety of ways to deploy the lightweight endpoint agent. You can push the installation directly from the console to your endpoints. You can use the relay machine once an endpoint package with relay functionality has been installed on that machine. You can also use third-party tools like SCCM or Jamf or custom scripts. You can manually install it on an endpoint by building the installation package in the console and putting it on a USB drive or network share for local installation. We also have the ability to generate a URL that can be emailed to users for manual package download and installation. Once you've populated your environment and installed the base endpoint package, configuration and management from the console is very straightforward. We'll go over the assignment of policies and integration with management tools like Active Directory, vCenters, and Nutanix, the configuration of notifications and generation of reports and more in the demo portion. Let's take a look at how Gravity Zone protects virtual environments. Gravity Zone was purpose-built for virtualization in the cloud. You may see some AV vendors who require a full agent and signature database on every virtual endpoint. Bitdefender handles virtual endpoint protection a little bit different in order to maximize VM performance and efficiency. With our approach to protecting virtual environments, we still deploy the Bitdefender agent to your VMs, the same one that you'd install on any other endpoint, but they're put into what's called a centralized scanning mode, resulting in a featherweight version of the agent. The featherweight agent only performs lightweight tasks like anti-exploit and process monitoring while offloading resource-intensive scanning and signature database downloads to a security virtual appliance or SVA on the host. So you're still getting all those additional layers of protection, application control, anti-exploit, machine learning, continuous process monitoring, et cetera. You're just getting them in the smallest footprint on each VM, giving you higher VM density and response times. The SVA is not required on each host, but you can certainly set up multiple SVAs for redundancy, customizable priorities, and even a certain level of automatic load balancing. And again, all of this is managed from the same single console that lets you manage your physical endpoints. We also have patented two-level caching algorithms that help minimize Gravity Zone impact on performance. This allows us to provide efficient task management so that duplicate objects are not repeatedly scanned on multiple VMs. Gravity Zone employs a highly efficient scanning technique which only examines fragments capable of execution so that entire files don't need to be sent from the virtual machine to the SVA, which further helps in reducing resource load. So to kind of sum it all up, what we have with Gravity Zone is a top-rated multi-layered security solution that is engineered for performance, efficiency, simplified manageability, and universal compatibility. Our Gravity Zone product is sold in bundles, as you can see here, starting with business security and moving all the way up to our ultra security bundle, and also as an enterprise a la carte, where you get to pick and choose exactly uh, which features uh, you want to install. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague for a look at the Bitdefender Gravity Zone Management Console. So this is the Bitdefender console. Uh, you can, this is the cloud console. We actually have two. One is cloud, one is on-premises. There's very little difference between the two, so we're going to focus just on the cloud console for the purposes of this demo. Uh, to access the cloud console, it's as easy as going to cloud.gravityzone.bitdefender.com. When you first log in, the first thing that you're going to be greeted by is this dashboard. The dashboard is designed to give you a very good overview of the health of your environment very quickly through these different portlets that we have here. You can add as many portlets as you want to focus on whatever information is most important to you, such as if you want to look at anti-phishing activity, for example, or block websites or firewall activity. You can add a portlet to look at any of those things. These portlets aren't just static graphs, however, they're all interactive. So for example, here I can see that there was some malware activity on one of my machines. I can click on it and get additional information. I can see that malware was detected and two issues were resolved. I click on that. I can see the two files that were deleted, the machine where the infection was detected, who was the user that was logged in, and the date and time when that detection happened. 
In the same way, I can look at, for example, by network patch status. I see that I have five urgent security patches available. So let me click on that to get more information. I can see my list of managed machines in my lab. I can see that this machine needs five patches. I click here and it shows me the patches that are available to be installed on that machine. And I can easily just select the patch I want and click install. And it will pull, uh, push out that patch to that machine directly from the reporting section that's tied into the dashboard. So again, the dashboard uh, contains several different pages. And they're, as I said, they're all designed to keep you informed, give you a brief overview of the health of your environment and let you take quick action if anything is detected or anything, if anything needs your attention. Now, the way that our product works, if you do go with our cloud solution, for example, you want to go ahead and the first thing you want to do is create packages. And the packages contain the different modules that you're choosing to install. <clears throat> Now, depending on the license type that you have, you might see uh, different modules listed here. In my case, I have an ultra license running here, which has basically all of our modules. So I can select which modules I want to install, everything from anti uh, advanced threat control to you know encryption, patch management, and something called relay and patch management cache server. What those two things are, basically the, the way those two function, uh, and I'll explain it through the relay, is that you can designate any machine on your network, uh, preferably a machine that's always on, it could be either a Windows or a Linux machine, to function as a relay or as a patch management cache server. And that machine will basically download all of the updates for Bitdefender if you're just using it as a relay, or for uh, updates for third-party products and Windows patches as well if you're using it as a patch management cache server. It'll store all those and then the rest of the machines on your network can then be pointed to that relay or to that patch management cache server to then uh, download the updates from that relay. Uh, and this way you're reducing the number of machines that are reaching out to the internet for updates and patches and things of that nature. And again, this is all optional. Uh, when you create your package, if you're running virtual machines, this is where you select your scan mode. So you can select to use centralized scanning, which uh, greatly reduces the, the performance impact on the virtual machines by offloading the heavier tasks to a security virtual appliance. So when you create this package, uh, you can select the scan mode to be custom scan um, and then select central scan for those uh, virtual machines. That way they'll be talking back to that security virtual appliance and then also have the fallback of running a local or a hybrid scan, which uses some cloud scanning as well uh, as a fallback in case that security virtual appliance is not available for whatever reason. And here basically is where you select the server and uh, tell the, uh, the package to communicate with this security virtual appliance. We have your usual options such as scan before, installation, setting uninstall password, et cetera. We usually recommend uh, removing scan before installation because that'll delay the installation and then running a full scan afterwards. Uh, but you have that option there. And then you connect to either the cloud uh, as a deployer or one of the relay devices you've set up. If you're running the cloud solution, what you want to do is download the package to at least one machine on your network. And once uh, you select the package and click the download links, you can see the different versions that we have here for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And then you would install that, uh, that uh, Bitdefender endpoint protection on one of the endpoints and then use that endpoint to discover the rest of the machines on your network. And the on-premises solution is a little different. There's a, actually a section where you can um, automatically uh, connect to Active Directory and other uh, virtualization providers, do that integration, and then discover your machines that way. Another option that you have, if you have some users that are remote, that don't connect to your network very, use, uh, very frequently, you can send them uh, links uh, with the installation package. And you can do this directly from the Gravity Zone uh, interface by just adding their email addresses and clicking send or you can copy the link uh, right from here and then add it to your own email and send it to the users that way. Now, uh, once you've installed the Bitdefender endpoint protection on at least one machine on your network, if you're using the cloud solution, uh, to discover the rest of the machines, there's a couple of things you can do. If you're using Active Directory, as I'm sure most of you are, you can designate a machine or that machine uh, that you just installed uh, the Bitdefender product on as the Active Directory integrator. And to do that, you would just click on the machine let me use this one as an, as an example. You go to integrations, and then you would select set as Active Directory integrator. And when you do that, it'll pull the Active Directory OU and display the machines just like you have them in Active Directory. And then 
to deploy the Bitdefender solution to the rest of the machines, it's as easy as just selecting the machines, going to task, and selecting install. And that'll push out the Bitdefender security to the rest of the machines uh, or to the machines that you select on your network. In this particular case, I already have, uh, I'm only viewing managed machines here for the sake of this demo, and I already have Bitdefender installed on all of these. Uh, some of these are offline. Uh, this one with the orange icon requires a reboot, and this one's just uh, online. You can click into the machine to get additional information, uh, such as uh, you know the IP address and all of that, as well as the protection layers that you have enabled. Uh, as you can see here, I get a message that uh, I need to reboot because of a patch uh, install that I did uh, recently. And I can see the, uh, the scan engines and how I have configured. In this case, I have central scanning with hybrid scanning. And I can see that all the modules are enabled. I can see which policy is assigned to that machine, and I can view the scan logs directly from here if I want to. Now, once you have the Bitdefender endpoint protection installed on your machines, you, you're going to want to fine tune the settings through the policies. And uh, one thing that you can do with our solution is you can create uh, location based rules for those policies. So, a perfect example of this that some of our customers use is they'll create a location based rule that will uh, disable the Bitdefender firewall when the machines are connected to the corporate network because there's already a corporate firewall there that's configured and seems redundant. And then, as soon as those machines disconnect from the corporate network, it'll re-enable the Bitdefender firewall. That way the machines are always protected at all times. And as you can see, you can create those location-based rules based on IP address range, gateway address, WIN server address, DNS, DHCP, network type, and so on. Now, jumping into the policies themselves, uh, you can create a new policy. You can create as many policies as you want and assign them uh, to the machines or to groups uh, as, as you see fit. Uh, so let's still, uh, dig through the policies real quick. Now, I'm not going to go through every single policy here because we would be here for hours, but just to give you a brief overview of how the policies work. And of course, you're welcome to try them all out um, you know, through a trial uh, on your own time if you'd like. So starting with something like notifications, we have several different notification options. So if you want to display pop-up notifications, uh, you can do that, uh, let's say, and you have complete control. So if I only want my users to see pop-up notifications when there's some kind of malware detected, I can do that and set that to only uh, critical alerts in that case. You can also do something like set as a silent mode. In silent mode, uh, the end user is not even going to get the Bitdefender icon in the system tray. All of the Bitdefender services will still be running in the background protecting them. You're still going to get all of the notification and information in the dashboard, but to the end user, uh, the product will be completely invisible. You have your update setting, settings where you can set up your update cadence. And as you can see, by default, we always try to update from the relay servers first and then fall back to the cloud if the relay server can't be reached for whatever reason. You can also select to update on the fast ring or the slow ring, depending on uh, how adventurous you are with, uh, with the updates. Jumping into the anti-malware settings, the on-axis scanning settings are the typical settings you would expect to see. You can scan local file, network files. You can put a size limit on the files you want to scan, scan inside archives, scan for different types of threats, and then take a default action when something is uh, detected to be infected or suspected of being infected. And those actions can be anything from disinfect deny access, delete, move to quarantine, or take no action. Our advanced threat control is our first of two layers of machine learning. And again, you can set it to be more aggressive or less aggressive, and also take a default action when it finds something infected, such as disinfect block or take no action. Jumping down to our on-demand scan, this is where you schedule your scans to run, such as quick scan, full scan, network scan, et cetera. And once you go into the options, you can see that you can schedule it for, to run a specific date and time. And then you have other options such as, uh, you know, if the runtime is missed, run it as soon as possible, or you can skip it to, to run the next time, the next scheduled time. And you have your normal options that, again, you would expect as far as what kind of files you want to scan, whether you want to scan inside archives and email archives, and what actions you want to take when something is found to be infected, suspected, or a rootkit. 
HyperDetect is our second layer of machine learning and it's completely tunable. So you can set it to how aggressive you want it to be based on the type of attack that you're most concerned with. So if you're most concerned with ransomware, for example, and not so concerned with grayware, you can then uh, you know, set ransomware to aggressive and grayware to normal. And again, once something is found, you can take an action such as disinfect, deny, delete, move to quarantine, or report only. Uh, we have this uh, report only and extend reporting on higher levels. Uh, what we recommend is the first week or so when you're running the product, uh, HyperDetect does look at behavior, so it might detect a, a, a software uh, as behaving a certain way. An example of this is if you have, for example, a proprietary program that maybe encrypts files on the network drives every Friday night, um, that action might be detected as suspicious by our HyperDetect. So you want to run this on a report only mode for about the first week, create your exclusions for any known uh, safe applications, and then come back into policy and change it to take a default action once those exclusions are, are created. We have this advanced anti-exploit. So a lot of malicious actors, what they're doing is they're targeting specific uh, programs that are used by businesses. And they're looking for exploits in those programs to then, uh, you know, drop some kind of malicious payload or somehow get in your network. What our advanced anti-exploit does is it looks at that kind of behavior. And if you have some other process trying to gain a privileged access to, let's say, Microsoft Word or accessing the memory in an unusual way, we'll look at that. We'll target those applications. And if we detect anything trying to do that, we're able to stop it then in its tracks. If you have a custom application that you want us to monitor with our advanced anti-expo, you can also add it as well. Uh, so it goes beyond just the list of applications we have here. These are just the most common ones. Now, jumping down to our sandbox analyzer, this is our uh, sandbox in the cloud where you can automatically or manually submit samples. So if there's, for example, someone gets a Word document that contains some macros, you're not sure if those micros are safe or not, you can automatically or manually submit that file to our sandbox. We'll detonate it, we'll run it in the cloud, and then we'll give you back a result on whether it's clean or whether it's infected in, in any way. There's two different modes that you can set this to, one is monitoring and one is blocking. So if you have it set to monitoring, the user won't have access to the file. In this example, let's say the Word file, they're not gonna be able to access it. Um, if you have it in blocking mode, if you have it in monitoring mode, they will be able to access it. Um, in blocking mode, um, the file will be blocked until it comes back with a clean diagnostic, uh, clean result. And again, you can take a default action if something is found to be infected. And here you can see the different types of uh, content that we're able to uh, detonate in our sandbox. Our firewall is your standard uh, firewall that replaces Windows. You can set up different network rules as well as application rules and connection rules, um, you know, to block certain applications or allow certain applications through specific uh, firewall ports. Pretty straightforward. Our content control is where our anti-phishing modules sit. Uh, we can scan SSL traffic. If you use POP3 and SMTP email, we can scan that as well. Uh, our web section is where our anti-phishing engine sits. Uh, and then we have our web access control. Uh, if you have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, computers that maybe face the public or you want to take more control over what uh, access your users have as far as surfing the web, you can do that with our solution. I can block internet access uh, during specific times and days, for example. And then we also have our web categories filter. So you can filter out uh, certain types of websites. So we're talking about anything from software piracy sites, tabloid sites, gambling sites, adult sites so on and so forth. You can also create exclusions. So if, for example, you wanna block all social media sites except Twitter, you can do that and create an exclusion for Twitter. Or if you wanna block specific sites, you can also add them as well. Our application control allows you to uh, block uh, applications. So you can define, for example, to block uh, Chrome you can do that by application name or the path. Our patch management solution is an add-on, a very popular add-on, uh, I must say, uh, that not only allows you to manage uh, patches for Windows, but also for third 
third-party products as well. And at the moment, this is only for Windows. Uh, patch management uh, is now available for Mac and Linux. This has become extremely popular recently with all of the uh, updates from uh, Microsoft that are creating havoc. Um, this lets you disable the Windows update and take control of those updates. Uh, so there's a couple of ways that you can manage patches. One is automatically and one is manually. So as I mentioned, you can set up a patch caching server or more than one and then have them uh, listed here so that uh, the patches are downloaded from those patch caching servers. You can run an automatic patch scan the way that this works. Any machine that has a Bitdefender installed that has a patch management enabled, you run a patch scan and go through and scan the machines for all the available patches for basically all the software that we support, which is quite an extensive list. And I'll show you that in just a second. And you can schedule that to run daily or weekly or however often you want. You can uh, set the patches to, un uh, to install automatically if you want to. And you can do, uh, again, schedule them to say, for example, security patches get installed immediately when they're available. And then non-security ones, you can install at a different time or not at all. It's completely up to you. Uh, you can, uh, if you leave this unchecked, it'll install patches for uh, any patches basically that's available, or you can specify vendors. And just to give you an idea of all the vendors that we support, here's a, a brief list. Everything from you know, Adobe to Google, Autodesk, Citrix, Microsoft, uh, so on, Sun Microsystem, uh, so on and so forth. And within each of these is the entire family of products. So when you're talking about Microsoft, you're talking about .NET, uh, Office, Exchange, uh, Windows, so on and so forth. It's quite an extensive list and is a good way of keeping your your system safe from those potential vulnerabilities uh, that products uh, tend to have. Now, I'm going to jump out of the policies real quick to show you a different way that you can install patches. Once you do that patch scan, we create this patch inventory. And the patch inventory gives you an inventory uh, of all the patches that you have available based on that patch scan. So if you want to install a specific patch, let's say that I'm looking for a Microsoft patch, a Windows patch, I know it's a critical patch, so I'm going to change the choose patch severity to critical. It'll only show me critical patches. Uh, you can look for the KB number, for example. Let's say it's, this is a patch I want to install. I can go ahead and push it out to my entire network or individual computers, uh, uh, however you see fit. The other way that you can do the patch install is uh, once you've done a patch scan, you can select the machine in question, for example, or the machines. You can select more than one. Uh, go to tasks, go to patch install. It'll show me all the patches available for those machines and I can select the ones I want and click uh, install. And it'll go ahead and install those patches and I can choose to reboot those endpoints after installing the patches if I want. So you have complete control over the patch management for not only Windows, but third party products as well. So let me jump back into the policies. Device control is also uh, something very popular, uh, especially with uh, you know educational customers that have you know a lot of students trying to plug in their USB devices and things like that. If you want to have control over that, uh, you can with our device control. For example, if I want to block USB devices, I can enable device control, go to external storage, go to custom, select USB, and select blocked. Now that's all fine and dandy, but what makes our product uh, unique and, and what a lot of people like is that you can create exclusions. And there's a couple ways that you can create those exclusions. So let's say that I want to block all USB devices except the ones my administrators use. I can do that. So I can add an exclusion manually if I know the device ID or the product ID. Or when you enable device control, it creates an inventory of all the devices that are connected to all of the endpoints running Bitdefender. And I can select the device from that inventory. So let's say the Samsung SSD uh, belongs to my administrator. I want to make sure that all uh, USB devices are blocked except this one. I just created an exclusion for that one, so he'll still be able to connect to Samsung SSD, but all, all other USB devices uh, will be blocked. We have exchange protection as well. If you're using an on-premises exchange server, uh, we're currently working on a solution for Office 365 Exchange, although that's not available yet. But again, uh, you have all kinds of anti-malware settings with Exchange here, so you can create all kinds of anti-malware filtering rules. And again, take a default action when something is found. 
You can schedule a scan task for your uh, uh, email store, for example. We also have anti-spam filtering, which again, um, you can create additional rules that filter and you know take additional actions such as uh, deliver the mail or maybe quarantine the mail or redirect it to a different mailbox if you have a spam mailbox, for example, or you can reject the mail. And then we also have content control, which you can filter out content. So if you want to filter out things like uh, you know adult uh, subject matter or something like that, you can do that. And again, create different rules. When something triggers one of those rules, you can redirect it or send it to quarantine. Also attachment filtering. So if you want to filter out specific types of attachment, like multimedia files, documents, spread sheets, archives, you can do that as well. We offer full disk encryption. Uh, we use uh, BitLocker on Windows and File Vault on Mac. And uh, you can enable or disable it directly through the console. And an advantage of, of using our console for your encryption solution instead of enabling it on each workstation is that we manage the encryption keys here. So you can easily get the, the user back up and running. So for example, uh, let me see if I have any drives encrypted. Might not because I just rebuilt my lab. Okay, unencrypted. Let's see this one. Uh, okay, so I don't have any drives encrypted right now, but if I did, um, you can get it. You would get a link here that says recovery. You click it, you put in your password, and it'll give you the recovery key so you can get the user back up and running uh, quickly. Uh, we introduced something called risk management with the last update. And this is a task that you run that uh, basically looks at all your security policies uh, on the endpoints that have Bitdefender installed and tells you um, whether you, those endpoints are a security risk at all. I mean, we give you uh, different ratings for different types of, of risks. So um, the ones in bright red are the most um, uh, uh, severe. Uh, and then we give you this uh, risk score as well. So if I click detail here, this will tell me what risks were identified. Some of them can be automatically resolved directly from the Gravity Zone console. And I can see those here. I can click on resolve all or resolve them individually, and you can it'll automatically send a task to do whatever configuration change is needed to resolve that risk. And then there are some that have to take uh, manual action on. And here you can see you select the risk. It'll give you a description of the risk and why it's risk, as well as the mitigation recommendations that we uh, give you on that specific risk. And again, uh, you can get more detail on the risk itself. It gives you, again, additional detail and the mitigation action. So this is new and something that we'll be continuing to improve uh, as we go along. Our reporting is very robust. Uh, as I mentioned before, in the dashboard section, you can run all kinds of reports on anything you want. So if I want to look at the malware status, uh, you can schedule it. So if you want to get a malware status report every day, or every week on all your computers or only specific computers, you can do that. And you can email it as a PDF attachment or a CSV file. And when you run, uh, you can run it on specific machines or your entire network. In this case, I'm gonna run a report, a malware status for this month. I'm gonna generate it. And as you can see, it's gonna generate the report that'll give me uh, the information that I'm looking for. And I can see which machines were infected. Um, there is only one machine. There were two infected files were deleted. And again, you can see the, the malware name, the path, who was the user logged in, and the date and time when the infection happened. You can create additional accounts. So if you have more than one user uh, that you want to set up as an, as an administrator, you can do that and give them additional rights uh, to the Gravity Zone console such as manage users, uh, view and analyze data, et cetera. And you can also view their activities. So if you want to see, uh, let's pick a company. If you want to see what they've been doing, um, you'll get a log of, of what those administrators are doing. It takes a few seconds. I can see here uh, that this user, which is me, uh, ran a malware status report 
uh, generated a patch install, uh, reports, uh, so on and so forth. We have a sandbox analyzer that I mentioned. Uh, you can do a manual submission to the sandbox. So if any files or URLs that you want to want us to scan, it, you can submit those uh, through this interface here. And when something does come back, does come back, you'll get this uh, report that'll give you information on behavior. And uh, if anything malicious, it'll tell you. And this is the basic report that you get. Um, if you do go with our EDR solution, which is our endpoint detection and response, you get a more detailed report, which I'm about to show you right now. So this is our endpoint protection uh, detection response solution. And basically this combines all the different modules that, that we have. And when any type of uh, threat is detected, uh, we'll give you a inform detailed information on that threat. So you can take additional action. So we have this divided into two sections. Uh, the investigate section is anything that uh, we detected that requires additional action by you, by the user. And the review section is anything that we've already taken automatic action on. We have this confidence score that basically the way that it works is the higher the confidence, the more confident we are that it's actually malicious, the lower, the more likely it is to be some kind of false positive. And let's take, for example, this 90 uh, confidence score. This is obviously something malicious. I can click view and get more information on that attack. It gives me this diagram of the attack itself where I can see the endpoint. I can see uh, the process that triggered it. I can see all the additional processes that were triggered it. Anything in red is anything Bitdefender detected as suspicious or malicious. And in this particular case, we automatically took action on it. But if we hadn't, you can take additional action directly from uh, this EDR uh, window. I can kill it. I can send it to quarantine. If it's a false positive, I can add an, an exception directly from here where I can add it to the block list. Uh, I can also take action on the endpoint itself. I can select it and isolate it from the network to make sure that whatever it got on there doesn't uh, spread to the rest of my network. Or if I saw that, for example, it got inf infected through a Google Chrome vulnerability, I can install a patch directly from here. Now when you select the, the attack itself, it gives you additional information on what it is, the malware type, the malware family, the dates, the hash information, the path, and then it'll give you the, the detailed sandbox report. So if I click on that, it'll take me to the actual report that gives me really detailed information on uh, this attack. This is what the file did when we sent it to the sandbox and we allowed it to detonate. Uh, this will give you an idea of what that file would have done had it infected uh, your network. Uh, this is good information uh, for the uh, SOC, for example, a uh, security specialist to have, or if you have a machine that got infected with this that doesn't have Bitdefender and you want to know what that uh, virus does, you get all this information. So you can see all the files were, that were detected associated with that uh, malware. You can see the behavior here. So any files that created, registry uh, uh, files, uh, registry keys, any scripts, any temp files. You get the MITRE techniques. So I can see here where it modified modify the registry any files it deleted, any scripts uh, it ran or created. Additional system uh, information, such as any files it created, deleted, temporary files created, registry changes. Uh, if it try to connect to any external source, so here I can see the network activity, I can use that information to then blacklist that domain in my corporate firewall. You, you get the DNS request, so you can do the same thing. You can blacklist that IP and domain. It gives you a timeline of the attack and a more detailed step-by-step -step timeline so I can see step-by-step -step, uh, what that attack is trying to do. So the first thing it tries to do, for example, in this case, is connect to two external sites and it uh, created a, a cloudcar.exe file. The next thing it did is create a registry key and it tells me the command it used to do that. Uh, it then it went on to a PowerShell script, so on and so forth. And I have all that information in this report. And again, here it is in a list form. And we even go so far as giving you screenshots of what the end user would have seen if uh, they, you know, this file would have been allowed to run in their environment. In this case, this was a, a fake ransomware thing, and that's what the end user would have seen on their screen. Now, going back to the EDR module itself, again, uh, there's other actions you can take. So I can establish a remote connection to that machine where the detection was made. And this will open a command prompt where you can run additional commands. If any remediation actions are, are necessary, you'll see them listed here. 
and that's that's pretty much it. Now, with our product, you can also make sure that you keep yourself informed by setting up notifications. So we have this notification pane here. Uh, you can email yourself all kinds of notifications on malware outbreaks, license expirations, upgrade status, hybrid attack activity, anti-phishing activity, so on and so forth. Uh, you can do uh, just select the different type of alerts that you want and enter the email addresses here, or you can do it uh, by alert. So if you want, you know, one administrator getting the malware outbreak alerts, uh, you can add those uh, his email here, and then someone else getting license expiration alerts, you can add their email here. So you have complete control over these email notifications. We also have integrations with third-party products um, through our API. So, oops, wrong one. So you can use our API, create API keys to integrate to different logging tools, for example, uh, so that you can get notified that way as well. This concludes our webinar. Please reach out to your account manager if you'd like to set up that one-on-one -on -one call with an engineer or if you have any questions. Thank you.